Welcome back to Chem Exam Explained, where the aim is chemistry clarity, exam mastery. In this video, we will be looking at K Chemistry 2022, Unit 1, Paper 2, Module 1. Let's begin. In looking at question 1, part A, you are given a table. Now, table 1 refers to the properties of simple subatomic particles. Now, you are to complete table one by inserting the information in the blank spaces provided for one, two, three, and four. Now, if you look in the table, you'll see the blank spaces, they, they are underlined. Now, for the first part, looking at particle, we know we have electrons, protons, and neutrons. That's for the first column. For the second column, you have 1 over 1840 for the relative mass of the electron, 1 for the relative mass of the proton, and 1 for the relative mass of the neutron. The relative charge, you are given negative 1 for the electron, positive 1 for the proton, and you were to fill in 0 for the neutron. And for the location, you can write shell or orbital, or outside the nucleus. And you are given for the proton, the nucleus, and the nucleus as well for the neutron. One part B. In 1803, John Dalton proposed four postulates which became known later as John Dalton's atomic theory. One of the postulates states that atoms of the same element are identical in mass and properties. This postulate was later proven invalid by modern atomic theory. Describe the evidence provided to disprove the postulate and the modifications made to the postulate. Now, this question is looking at the existence of isotopes. Now, isotopes are atoms of the same element with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. That is, the mass numbers are different. Therefore, atoms of the same element that are isotopes are different in mass and properties. Part C, 1. Define the term relative atomic mass. The weighted average mass of one atom of an element compared to one twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. Part 2. Calculate the relative atomic mass of neon, which contains 90.9% of neon-20, 0.3% of neon-21, and 8.8% of neon-22. So the simple formula is relative atomic mass is equal to the sum of the isotopic masses times the percentage abundance divided by 100. And so you look at each isotope, you will multiply the mass or the isotopic mass of that element times the abundance, and you'll then do the same thing for the other isotopes divided by the total percentage, which is 100. So the RAM is equal to 20 times 90.9 plus 21 times 0 0.3 plus 22 times 8.8 divided by the, the total of the percentage, which is 100. And your answer is 20.18 AMU, which means atomic mass unit, but you can leave it blank. So your answer could simply be 20.18. Part D, one. Write the SP electronic configuration of the oxygen atom in its ground state. So for oxygen, with eight electrons, you're looking at 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now, this is the box notation which shows you how the electrons are arranged in the orbitals. Part two. Explain how the atomic orbitals in the oxygen atom overlap to form a double bond. Part two. Explain how the atomic orbitals in the oxygen atom overlap to form a double covalent bond in the oxygen molecule O2. 
Now I start out by looking at a simple diagram of the oxygen molecule, showing you that the first bond is a sigma bond and the second bond is a pi bond. Now, if you look at the ground state for oxygen, you will see that you have all the electrons arranged in the particular energy levels. However, in the hybridized state, you have now a mixing of orbitals. Okay? So the orbitals are going to mix. So we have S orbital mixing with two P orbitals and one p orbital remain unhybridized. So if you look back here, you see that this s orbital will mix with these two p orbitals, leaving this one unhybridized. So if I now combine an oxygen atom with another oxygen atom, you will see how the bonding is taking place. So this represents one oxygen atom with my hybridized oxygen and another oxygen atom that is hybridized. So the first bond, which is the sigma bond, is an end-on, end-on overlap. Or you could say head-on, head-on overlap as well. So that's your sigma bond. The second bond comes from the p orbitals overlapping sideways. Now, in explaining the answer, you will say the sigma bond is formed from the end-on, end-on overlap of the sp2 orbitals, while the pi bond is formed by the sideways overlap of the two unhybridized p orbitals. Part three. D, part three. The boiling point of water is higher than expected, and ice has a lower density than water. Account for these physical properties of water and ice. Let us look at the answer. The hydrogen bonds in ice cause the molecules to be arranged with large spaces in a repeating hexagonal pattern. The large spaces in ice makes it less dense than water. The boiling point in water is high because it has intermolecular hydrogen bonds, which are the strongest intermolecular forces, therefore requires a lot of energy to be broken. And that is why you have high boiling point. E part one, define the term bond energy. Now bond energy is the amount of energy needed to break one mole of a particular bond in one mole of gaseous molecule. E part two, table two shows the bond and energy values for some covalent bonds. Determine the enthalpy change for the reaction of methane and oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Show all working. So you are given the equation, methane plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide and water. How are we going to determine the enthalpy change for this reaction? Now, the first thing we'll do is we'll draw out the bonds. So methane has one carbon with four hydrogen. So we have four carbon to hydrogen bonds. As you can see, carbon to hydrogen bonds here. You have two oxygen molecules, and therefore you draw two oxygen molecules to represent the oxygen to oxygen energy, which is 496 kilojoules per mole. That produces one molecule of carbon dioxide. And so carbon dioxide is made up of carbon with two oxygen. So you have two carbon to oxygen double bonds plus water, which is H2O. So you have two molecules of water, each containing two OH bonds. So in total, you have four OH bonds. So when you go back to the table, you look at the OH bond, and that must be multiplied by four. So let's go through and work out our values. So four times four CH bonds is four times 410, which is 1,640. The two O, O double bond is two times 496, which give us 992. The two carbon to oxygen bond, which is carbon to oxygen double bond, is two times 740, which is 1,480. And the four oxygen to hydrogen bond is four times 
460, which give us 1,840. Now, if you sum up all the energies for the reactant, you end up with 2,632. And if you sum the products, you get 3,320. Now, the formula that we're going to use is the enthalpy change for the reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes of the reactant minus the sum of the enthalpy changes of the product. And so you, you put in the information 2,632 for the reactants minus 3,320 for the products to give us a value of negative 688 kilojoules per mole. So this reaction is an exothermic reaction. Part F, a student is asked to determine the enthalpy of neutralization reaction between 50 cm cube of 1.00 molar sodium hydroxide solution and 50 cm cube of 1.00 molar hydrochloric acid. Outline the experimental steps required to obtain an accurate value. Include all calculations. Assume that the densities of acid base solutions are one gram per centimeter cube. The heat capacities of the solutions are 4.20 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Let's look at the answer. The first part of the answer, you must prepare two colorimeters by securing two polystyrene cups in two separate beakers. You are going to use two burettes and measure out 50 cm cube of one molar HCl in one of the colorimeter and 50 cm cube of one molar sodium hydroxide in the other colorimeter. You are then going to put on the lid and place the thermometer in the colorimeter and note the steady temperature for each. Add the sodium hydroxide all at once to the colorimeter with the HCl. Stir the mixture, then record the highest temperature. Repeat the procedure about three times for accuracy. For the calculation, you're going to calculate the temperature change for each trial using T final minus T initial. You're also going to calculate the average temperature change. That is T1 plus T2 plus T3 divided by three. The equation, which is a neutralization reaction, includes sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid to produce sodium chloride plus water. If you look at the calculation using the molar concentration and the volume, you will get a mole of 0 0.05 for both sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, which produces a mole ratio of one to one between sodium hydroxide and water or HCl and water. In continuing with the calculation, we're going to be using the formula, the heat change is equal to Mc delta T which is M for mass, C for the specific heat capacity, and the delta T is temperature change. The mass given was 100 grams. The specific heat capacity is 4.2 joules per gram per degree Celsius. The temperature change was calculated when we found the average temperature change. The calculation for the enthalpy change for 0 0.05 mole of water would be calculated and then you find the enthalpy change for one mole of water. This is the end of question one, module one.